This is Switzer Network News. Ships travel around the world using shipping lanes. Well, whales can be in the same areas, raising the potential for collisions between the two, or ship strikes. Essentially, there are more larger, faster ships, and there's whales that tend to be in the same physical space. Scientists are estimating that they may be able to detect 10% of ship strikes, but that number may be too low. In the last 20 years on the California coast, there's been just under about 100 documented vessel strikes. So that comes to maybe four or five a year. That doesn't seem like a lot, but if we're only getting 10%, then we're talking 40 or 50 a year, which is huge in comparison to what the blue whale population or humpback whale population can sustain in terms of fatalities. The blues are probably the population that's most at risk. They're the population that does not appear to be really recovering since the days of whaling. So for the blue whale, there can be no more than three, three animals taken out of the population for reasons other than natural causes. Um, in order to maintain the recovery of the animal. That's three per year. Can the ships and whales be separated somehow? The easiest thing to do is keep the ships away from where the whales are feeding because we're not gonna tell the whales where to feed. They're gonna go wherever they want to go. And the best we can do is try to route those vessels around them to a different spot. Given the complexity of this issue, I asked Leslie if she's hopeful that answers can be found to address it. I definitely think that we will address it, and it has been, um, to a certain extent, addressed on the East Coast with the North Atlantic right whale, a critically endangered species. There's almost about 300 left on the planet. And they've um, done some of the very things that we're looking at doing here on the West Coast in terms of moving the shipping lanes to avoid key feeding areas of the whales and doing and implementing speed reductions. I think the key aspect is that the shipping industry is aware of the problem. There are players at this table and they're talking with us and really working with us. And also to get on board and try to figure out how can we modify shipping lanes? How can we do dynamic management that's not going to impact commerce but will still benefit the animals. Leslie says you can learn more at this website or you can email feralons at noaa.gov to say you support sanctuaries taking action on this issue. Switzer Fellows are involved in a variety of areas. If you'd like to learn more, please visit switzernetwork.org and then click on the News tab. I'm Jerry Kaye.